does Chris Paul drop out of the top five point guard rankings of all time if he loses this finals? Yes, I do believe that to be the case. Um, and I was the one that said he'd be in the top five if he were to win the championship because I think that he's one of the great, great floor generals the game has ever seen and the surefire first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, but I would remind you who my top four are. It would be Irvin Magic Johnson. It would be Steph Curry. It would be Oscar Robertson. It would be the great Isaiah Thomas. Uh, he ain't moving any of those four. All right? And then we have to take into consideration, how about a Jason Kidd? Won a championship with Dallas. Went to two NBA finals with our man RJ and Kenyon Martin and all of those all of those guys. I know Kenyon Martin got on me lately uh, for a couple of things that I may have said. Kenyon Martin, I ain't got nothing but love for you, my brother. You feel free to get on me all you want to. I ain't got nothing but love and respect for that brother and how he played the game of basketball. Got a lot of love for Kenyon Martin. You know that, RJ. Uh, but Jason Kidd uh, was the floor general for y'all when y'all went to two uh, NBA finals appearances. Uh, I can't ignore Jason Kidd. I can't ignore GP Gary Payton. Um, I can't ignore guys like that. Of course, the great John Stockton as well, even though he lost in two NBA Finals appearances. CP3 could be in top five if he wins it. But if he doesn't, I would have to put probably uh, uh, Jason Kidd or Gary Payton right there. I'm glad you brought up Gary Payton, Stephen A., because somehow Gary Payton gets lost in these conversations when we he talk about phenomenal. point guards, I guess because he scored a lot. Gary Payton led a team to a champ to, to, to the finals and lost to Michael Jordan, right? Like, you know, it's, 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 it's in six games. It was an elite defender. It was an elite defender and could score and could lead, do all those things. Gary Payton was totally great. I don't think Chris Paul necessarily drops out of the top five. I agree with your top four. Remember when you made your point guard list? I said, perfect. I agree. I think, it's, I think Stockton has a hell of a case, but ultimately we both agree why he's not there, because he couldn't take over a game the same way that, let's say, Isaiah could, right? And I give Isaiah the slightest of margins over Stockton. And Steve Nash was not a defender, and although Stockton was and Peyton was, but Peyton didn't have the kind of, um, kind of point guard ability to elevate everyone that I feel Chris Paul has. Not that he doesn't have it, but I think Chris Paul has more of that stuff. Now there's Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd couldn't shoot until he was no longer at his best. When I, It's not that he's a clear cut over any of these guys. Or, by the way, guys like Kevin Johnson and guys that don't always come up. Now there's Lillard, there's Westbrook. Do you consider AI a point guard? There are a lot of guys. But in terms of point guards and the way we think about how a point guard plays, Chris Paul still has a hell of a case as a top five guy, even if he loses here. Guys, what is the weakness exactly? Defends, checks. Is he a floor general? Check, check, check. Can he score at every level? And he can shoot. And he has a feel for the game. And he's a leader. And it goes on and on and on. Chris Paul is kind of the perfect point guard. So while you're right, it's not a slam dunk, so to speak, one way or another, if he loses with Peyton, Nash, Stockton, Kidd, and the list goes on, they ain't slam dunks over him either. And in fact, if push comes to shove, I'd probably, by the narrowest of margins, He'll take CP3. You, you know what's so funny is that we're talking about a lot of modern day point guards in the last like 20, 25 years. We're not even talking about legacy point guards when you talk about Bob Cousy. I know the game was different, but even like a Walt Clyde Frazier. Look at some of the numbers that he put up uh, in, in, in the finals when he was with the Knicks. It's like there's so many high level point guards. And for me, obviously, I'm biased. I think Jason Kidd is the best point guard uh, that I've played with outside, you know, and even seen outside of Magic Johnson. But I'll show you the weakness for Chris Paul. This is where Chris Paul, in my opinion, is not a top five point guard. And even though there's other guys that have these things, look, in 2018, he was up 3 2 against the Warriors. In 16, he's up 2 0 against the Trailblazers. 3-1 against uh, the Rockets, 2-0 against the Grizzlies, and 3-2 against the Spurs. And all of those were losses. All of those were losses. So while he is a great point guard, and he is one of the best point guards of this era, if not the best point guard of his generation, to me, that's the thing that keeps him out of the top five all time. When you have all of these checklists, we talk about John Stockton lost twice to Michael Jordan. Gary Payton lost to... Michael Jordan, Jason Kidd lost to Kobe and Shaq, 
and then you and then we also lost to Tim Duncan and David Robinson. So even when you look at some of the great point guards of all time, some of their losses were to high level teams. And Chris Paul has a lot of tough, a lot of tough postseason losses here. And even here, they're up 2-0, and there's a chance that they might still lose this series. That's why, to me, he's not a top five. If he wins this, it puts him in the conversation for top five. Hmm. I get where you're coming from. I would tell you that um, as I look at his career in New Orleans with the Clippers, um, obviously uh, Oklahoma City, Houston, um, and now, um, you know, Phoenix. Chris Paul's never really been the favorite. The one year with exactly. Lob City was a catastrophe. Um, when they had, uh, they were 3-2 about to advance the Clippers to their first conference finals appearance, and they collapsed at the hands of Houston with Kevin McHale as the coach sitting James Harden down with Dwight Howard and others in the lineup. They went on a, like a 49-9 run. But I look at CP3, and one of the things, RJ, that I get into it with Max on occasion, CP3 is not some 6'4 athletic freak like Russell Westbrook. He's not a 6'2", 6'3 athletic freak like Derrick Rose once was. CP3 is a six-foot guard. And so when you look at him and, and the, the, the absence of athleticism, meaning above the rim capability and things of that nature, Okay, what do you have to lead, lean on? The basic fundamentals of basketball and a cerebral approach to the game that is rivaled by very few in the game's history. And when we look at it from that perspective, that's where the word quintessential comes into play, which is why I say CP3 is one of the great quintessential point guards we have ever seen. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, Subscribe to ESPN+.